What's up guys? Some of you like it when I'm a little pissed off. I'm a little mad today. I cannot believe that we just put up with this from the AMA and they make a mockery of this sport. And I'm gonna explain to you exactly how they've done that. It's ridiculous. I'm gonna remind you guys why Glenn Helen is still not on the national circuit. And I can't believe that more people aren't jumping on board. I really wish the manufacturers would open their eyes and see they're being manipulated by certain people in this industry. But remember guys, subscribe. I appreciate it. It helps me with the channel, it helps with the videos. And also, if you have it, go check out my MMA channel. I got some UFC stuff. I'm following a, a guy trying to get back into the UFC, Justin Janes, as his journey you know, through the lower ranks of fighting. If you check that out, I would really appreciate it. But uh, yeah, let's get into this bull crap. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers I say, that's the bad guy. So the AMA is tied in with the promoters. They're on the same payroll teat. They're sucking from the same source of income. And guess what? They understand the Lawrence brothers are good for that source of income. So this all started back when Jet and Jason Anderson got into it at San Diego and Anderson didn't take crap from the golden boy, grabbed his helmet, and you know what? Jet had it coming. Jet came over to him, Jet grabbed his helmet first. You know what, you mess with the bull, you get the horns. That's what happens. And then there was the half-hearted apology that just then kind of pissed off Anderson a little bit more. Listen, that's not a guy to mess around with. El Hombre stands up for himself, speaks his mind, which the organizations hate, which is why the AMA has been out to get that guy for a long time. In my opinion, AMA can suck it most of the time. So now, you know, all year we've had tensions between Anderson and the Lawrence brothers. It hasn't really bubbled over, but you've seen a couple minor incidents. Well, in that main event, Jason Anderson makes an aggressive pass on Hunter Lawrence. No, it was not worthy of any penalties. That's hard racing. Is it something that's probably gonna come back on you and is Hunter gonna be pissed? 100% and Hunter deserves to come back on him. Not being lapped. Once you're being lapped, the race is not yours. You're not involved. Like I've said before, I have no issues with what Hunter did to him, but you can't do it from a lap down. And then come to find out they didn't show it on the broadcast right after you know, the incident with, you know, Anderson and Hunter, Jet came in and smashed Anderson hard, which was crazy because he's trying to lock up his first championship and now he's out there playing games with El Hombre. And I, I will speak, I'm gonna speak from my own personal experience. When you try hard to take somebody down like Jet did and you look back and they are still there, oh, it's not a good feeling. There's a guy by the name of Sean Morga, not Sean Morgan, Sean Morga out of New Mexico. I did this to him. We were racing. I knew he was faster than me. The only way I was going to beat him is if I put him down. So I slowed up and slammed him as hard as I could. And man, in the next turn, I saw that white fender and I was like, oh boy, I'm in big trouble. And you know, Jet felt that exact same way because he almost wrecked trying to get out of the way. And he just moves over and lets Anderson by and goes, okay, I can't be a part of this. What was I thinking? And from there on out, he did the right thing and just rode in for the championship. But Hunter broke many rules. Like you just do not, you do not take a guy out from a lap behind. That is some Bush League stuff. You do not do that. If you have a problem, and now what Anderson did was aggressive. And like I said, it deserves payback, but not the way that Hunter did it. What Hunter did is what Bogle did back in the day. Bogle got disqualified, yet the AMA has their, you know, their cash cow, one of the Lawrence brothers, do it. He gets a slap on the wrist. He got a small fine. And they probably wouldn't even have done that if people didn't make a big deal of it. It's embarrassing. But what's even worse, Jason Anderson gets punished for what he did to Hunter, which was a clean, hard racing move. Well, I don't know if I'd call it clean, but it was a hard racing move. That's stuff that happens in Supercross. You know how that's policed? Next time, Hunter and him come together, Hunter owes him one. That's how you deal with it. You do not wait a lap and then torpedo the guy. That's just wrong. That deserves a disqualification. I think Hunter would probably even agree with me that that's what he should have got. But the fact that the organization is protecting him is disgusting. It hurts the integrity of the sport. Just think about this, guys. If you take Anderson, let's reverse the roles. Now, Hunter comes in hard. Anderson goes down. Anderson waits and takes him out. You guys would have his head on a stick. You'd want him banned for life. You'd want all these horrible things to happen to him. If Justin Barsha did it, you'd want him banned for life. 
But since Hunter Lawrence did it, nobody cares. That's disgusting. And for all you fanboys out there, he's gone soft on us like some schoolboy bitch. And let me emphasize to you guys saying this is, oh, if he was an Australian, you wouldn't be. I don't give a crap that they're from Australia. I love that they're from Australia. They have really cool accents. They bring a whole new audience in. It is a gift to have the Lawrence brothers in this sport. And I'm a fan of both of the guys. And I think it's great when they do good. But when they break the rules, you can't just give them a pass. If you would have suspended or disqualified Anderson for that same move, you've got to do that to Hunter. It's You can't only enforce the rules on people you don't like and ignore them when the riders are cash cows. You just can't. It hurts the integrity of the sport. Hey guys, check out uh, Coach Rob's podcast. He's got Navigating Amateur Motocross. He's got a podcast with uh, Derek. I like Derek Harris. He's awesome. That guy can talk and he's very, very up on what's going on with amateur racing. And if you're into amateur racing or you're taking your family there, check out their show. Epic Garage Designs. If you want to clean up your garage, order slat wall. Go to epicgaragedesigns.com. Get yourself some slat wall. Install that up. You will open up so much space. You'll be like, wow, I can't believe I didn't do the slat wall earlier. Thank me later. Order it now. So the AMA used to have a guy by the name of John Gallagher. And he made some horrendously emotional decisions. He had it in for Anderson too. I thought when he left, they'd be better. Now they're better at hiding it. They're not necessarily, they're doing the exact same things. It might even be worse because they're actually more diplomatic about how they present it. It's not presented with emotion. John Gallagher would get into it with these guys and it was pretty obvious. But this problem with the AMA, it's a lot bigger than we think it is. So you take sports, Sports, the only thing they have is integrity, right? We want to know the best guys can go out and win on a level playing field. That's why we do the sport. Now, American Gladiators, remember that show? Well, they used to have guys on there, but they kind of rigged it in the sense of they favored rules towards certain people so that they could manipulate the outcome. They didn't manipulate the athletes that came on and competed, but they manipulated the rules to control them. That's what the AMA is doing. They're walking a fine line in making Supercross into a show more like American Gladiators and taking it out of the sports realm. And that, to me, is the biggest offense of this whole thing. Let's keep it real. I mean, remember what happened when the NBA had their scandal with the referees that were kind of blowing a few calls here and there? The whole integrity of the sport, that's the one thing sports have. And if we lose that, it's over. This sport, nobody will care. It doesn't matter. We don't want to watch pre-arranged races and we don't need rule fixing to make it seem as though it's real when it's not so be very careful with what you're doing in the ama you need to be consistent because you will hurt everybody's pocketbook so you're hurting yourself more than anyone else if you guys keep doing this you think you're just protecting their your cash cow and the lawrence brothers you might be destroying the whole damn thing so be very very careful you're walking a thin line guys check out ride strapped i will be with ride strapped at the paula national uh, they got goggles, glasses, shirts, just a patriotic company, and I can't wait to hang out with those guys. They're a lot of fun. If you're shipping anything, use Precision Transport. Club MX has already used them, and they were ecstatic with the service they got and the prices they got. So go to pretransport.com. So speaking of nationals, Glenn Helen is run by some really good people. The Feldkamp family and those guys, they're actually giving back to racers this week. They don't have a national, but they put up a $10,000 purse. They call it the Stopwatch Nationals. They're doing two motos. As of recording this, Pierce Brown won the first moto, but what a great thing to do for the riders. If you really want to know who cares about the riders, just take a look at what they're doing when they don't have to. They don't have a national. They don't have anything going on. This is just them giving back to the sport. And it reminds me of why they're not a national, because they stood up for the sport against the Coombs family. Davey Coombs Sr., and if you want the whole story, head over to uh, the Cooksey Media Facebook page. I've got the whole story with all the stats posted in there and, and the whole story. I had emails and I talked to everybody. I covered this extensively as to why Glenn Helen isn't a national anymore, but what it comes down to is betrayal. The Coombs family straight up betrayed the National Promoters Group, which Davey Coombs' father, Dave Coombs Sr., established to protect tracks. He went and negotiated on behalf of the NPG but ironically, he came out and MPG didn't win the Nationals. Uh, MX Sports did, which is his own personal company. Yeah. Do you see the conflict of interest there? You go there representing one group and then you have your own group 
and you don't it's pretty easy to outbid the competition when you represent the competition so it, it, it's a dirty disgusting way that that happened but there's a lot of money on the line i understand that's how business works but if you want to support a track that cares about the sport just give glenn helen a shout out thanks guys i appreciate everything don't forget to check out that mma content that thing's growing fast i'm doing some cool stuff over there and uh all right i'll catch you guys later